Cissou. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your seat! Hello and welcome to the match preview on Seagull Social ahead of Wolves. Very big game, to be fair. I mean, it's only very, very early in the season to be calling anything a big game, but it feels like it, you know. I watched Wolves the other day and they were pretty impressive. But before we get into any of the action, Maz, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Yeah, uh, had a day off today, so that was quite nice. Just went for a run, been chilling out. Obviously, watch England beat Australia in the semi-finals Lovely. of the Women's World Cup, so that was always... Big up the Lionesses. Yeah, big up the Lionesses. Um, big, big win, that, and obviously in the final... And yeah, no, no, it's been nice, man, just to, just to chill, really, because then I've yeah, got a busy, busy rest of the week. Um, so yeah, I just want to recharge the batteries. How about you, mate? Anything exciting? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've been doing content for the Linuses. So yeah, I've been sort of interviewing some people, getting some nice. reactions. Everyone's buzzing. It's great. I love, I love London when people are buzzing, you know? And it's just one of them good, one of them feeling good mornings. Yeah, it's, it's not often, yeah, just, but yeah. It just gets you in the mood, you know, just gets you in the mood. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know. But when there's a big result like that, it gets the nation together. I love it. So, yeah, no, good stuff. Um, good morning. And um, yeah, here we are. Wolves, big game, as I said. Um, I'm not sure what to expect, you know, because as we mentioned on the podcast last week, the sort of main sort of denominator of things that worry us was our midfield. Obviously, without Caicedo, are we going to be able to cope with Wolves' pace? Cunha the other day, Maz, I don't know if you've watched the Man United game, but he was yep. electric. And that's one problem, potentially, that could be for, you know, a lack of Caicedo midfield. Oh, mate, 100%. Uh, yeah, I was about to point out Cunha, he was brilliant. Like, those direct runs he had through the midfield were, were dangerous every time he had the ball. And also, I thought Lamina was brilliant as well. He, he, so, it's actually funny how it, it sort of reminded me of, of that Caicedo, McAllister uh, sort of dynamic that we had yeah. last season. But for Wolves, so he had Cunha making those direct sort of forward runs. And then you had Lamina as the prote protector and the one who sort of made the tackles and yeah. sort of, you know, stopped, stopped Man United from progressing. So, yeah, those two look really good good in that centre midfield to be honest with you and I, and I know uh, well I'll speak for myself but I, I thought I predicted Wolves to go down this season but I know it's just one showing but mm. after that United game they look they look good like they, they look solid they don't I think one big problem they're going to have and, I'm, and I think everyone was talking about it is their lack of goals potentially they just couldn't hit a barn door the yeah. other night and they they created chances but just couldn't finish so that could be their their big downfall this season if they, if they don't find someone who can get them goals or if they don't sign someone who scores them goals I think they'll be in big trouble. But yeah, no, Cunha looked really dangerous. And um, I think that, that midfield of um, Cunha, Nunes and Lamina is actually a pretty solid one. So um, yeah, man, they, they, they look good and they surprised me. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Gary Neal's got a weird a weird thing with how he run, runs his sides. I mean, how he did with Bournemouth. I mean, he did well and then they obviously got rid of him mm. because they wanted a little bit more of an expansive approach. But I thought how they played against United was very, very promising. Whilst at the same time very very disappointing, I guess if you're a Wolves fan watching that, mm. it was it was pretty horrendous in front of goal. It reminded me so much of Brighton in 2021 with Mope and Trossard <laughs> missing Brighton. so many chances. Mm. Yeah, I think we had Trossard memes, we had Mope in front of goal <laughs> memes, we had everything, and mm. yeah, it was it was horrendous at times to watch. And Wolves just reminded me of that. And watching that game, I was almost just as annoyed for them watching that when mm. I thought of. Uh, that penalty at the end as well, they didn't get given oh, prime yeah, that, United away atrocious. sort of vibes, you know? Yeah, yeah we can actually uh, just talk, talk a bit about that just because it's officiating, isn't it? It's just, it's, a, it's yeah. been awful beginning at the beginning of the season. Mate, 100%. Like, we talk about, and I know Ben mentioned it as well, but the opening weekend, we had so many, like, contentious decisions where referees just weren't really doing their jobs properly. Yeah. And then you see that on Monday. Like, well, Onana's just cleared him out. And look, let's be real. As much as people, I think a lot of people have been saying, yeah, a lot of people have been saying, oh, like, actually, do you know what? The more I watch it, I think it actually wasn't a penalty. And I was like, I don't know about that. I think I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> just, more I just, watch it, more I think uh, it more is a penalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. Um, yeah, Anana just clears him out, doesn't he? He doesn't get anywhere near the ball. He d doesn't really commit to it properly. And I think he takes his eye off the ball when he just clatters into the man. I think it was Kalad Kaladzinic, uh, the striker, I think it was, he, he clattered. And yeah, um, it's yeah it, was just, it was just a terrible decision. And I, I think the PGMOL came out as well, or John Moss, sorry, John Moss came out uh, the day after and said, 
that was the penalty. We should have given that as a penalty. And it's just like, how how is this? Keep, how does this keep happening? How do we keep getting these apologies and these decisions going against mm. you know the smaller clubs, so to speak, or, or the not the top six, the big six, six seem to keep getting these decisions go go for them. Yeah. Like prime example was for us last season with Matoma at Spurs. Like that one still really sticks in my head because it was like oh, that's it was such a game. ludicrous. Yeah, it was just such a ludicrous decision. Like, how does this keep happening? So, yeah, it's it's worrying, really. But, yeah, yeah, what can we do? I agree. And I, the thing is, I worry, is what... It sounds ridiculous, but what actually would be quantifiable for an apology? Because just saying sorry at the end of it doesn't really do anything. So we don't get any points. <laughs> we don't get to regain, replay the game. We don't get anything. We just, we just got to move on with it. And yeah. we still lose out on our points. We still lose out on the goals. Whatever it is, let's cost it. So what what 100%. would it take for you to be satisfied for you know say a, a, an error that big to be able to actually mean something to the team? I, I know it's never going to happen, and and look, we've got to be unfortunately realistic about these things. But I, I agree with you. I think the only way I think fans would be happy if some kind of retrospective action would happen, such as an awarding of a point. Let's say so. Let's say you're one nil down, and that penalty because. Again, you could always say like, "Oh, they might have missed the penalty." You can't, you can't award a point. Like, it's really isn't difficult. Eighty percent of penalties go in, though. Well, yeah, so yeah, you'd have exactly. To go, so they go on like percentiles and stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd have to go with probabilities and stuff. So, look, I know it's never going to happen, but I think as a team that that loses out on a big decision, like you said, an apology does nothing. So, the only thing that would I think appease fans is a point or, or awards awarding of a point or three yeah. points, whatever it might be. be but hard. look, let's be real. It's never going to happen. Um, I mean, uh, the only other thing maybe is like uh, um, doing something like making action towards the referee, maybe some kind of like, you know, maybe a three match mm. ban. <laughs> I know it sounds quite excessive, but if, if a player gets a red card, they Even get three more, match bans. You know, so, like, like demotions so, and, yeah. and yeah, like making them come out to the media maybe and explaining yeah, what they explaining saw there the decisions. and actually taking questions like managers and players do. Like They mm. should have to be faced with their like their consequence of what they've done because they're probably 100%. the only position in the whole of, well, most, most jobs to be honest, but they're probably one of the only positions that just don't have to have any repercussions to what they do it's very 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 weird but yeah i agree it needs to something needs to change in that aspect but i guess this isn't a ranting yeah. podcast it's meant to be a preview but yeah, <laughs> i can i feel for for wolves fans on that that game because yeah, that was sure. harsh on a brighton perspective though um we're looking pretty good obviously the, the game against luton we we played well to a degree probably not as good as we wanted to um it is first of season vibes we have lost a lot of players particularly a big core obviously in mcallister and Caicedo. um Wolves were, as we said, rampant. Does it worry you, Maz, going into this game as, you know, if they catch us on a few counter-attacks, there isn't really that that depth in midfield to stop them? Or are we just going to be too good and outthink them on the day? I think go, go, before I saw them play Man United, I was I was, I was pretty confident, you know, we, we looked good against Luton. Mm -hmm. I know, again, respectfully to, to Luton, it was Luton at home. Um, of course, Wolves are going to be much tougher. And also, actually speaking, um, watching yeah. Gary O'Neill speak after the game, he actually just seems like a really self-aware, good manager, to be honest with you. So, like, the, the yeah, more, basically Monday night has... Yeah, the Monday night has just basically changed my whole perspective on Wolves, to be honest with you. So, I, I am, to answer your question, <laughs> I am worried. Uh, I am worried for sure, like, you know, anything can happen, especially Wolves away. You know, it's not, it's not exactly an easy place to go to, um, even though we've had some successes recently, obviously, with the 6-0 last season. And I think it was 3-something in the uh, away. It's 3-0 um, there at their I, place, the year 3-0, that's... The year after that's last it. season was three two. Oh, there you go. That's it. That's it. Um, so yeah, you know, we've had some recent successes, and I think our our key thing, our key differentiator, I think going into this game is our finishing because we've actually looked really clinical uh, as of late, and especially under De Zerbi, we've actually looked clinical and we actually score goals. So I think that's going to obviously work in our favour in comparison to Wolves. But yeah, you're right. I think that plug of Caicedo, how we adapt. Does Billy Gilmore come in uh, to play alongside De Hood? Um, does James Milner start a right back? All these sort of questions that you're probably, as Brighton fan, thinking. Um, but yeah, I think the main differentiator is going to be our finishing. And uh, if we can stop that midfield three of Lamina, Nunes and um, Cunha, I think that'll be the key key battle. Yeah, I think, yeah, that battle in that midfield. So who would you start, Mads? Would you go with Gilmore for a bit more muscle, perhaps, and then someone to control the tempo whilst you've got Dahoud to sort of 
be the, the, the main box to box. And then you've got Gross as well, obviously, putting the passes through. Um, because yeah. I, I do feel like that first half in Luton was a bit of a scare, really, in, in terms of, you know, what we could what could potentially happen, if you like. Um, you know, we got overrun a lot. Uh, De Hood got overrun a lot. He's not going to be putting in tackles, as we know. He's going to be one that's going to be, you know, putting through passes and, um, and having a good first touch and stuff. So what do you think? I, I think De Hood starts. I think he's a bit of a set starter. Yeah. But then what happens around that? Oh, mate, honestly, I've been thinking about this since the Luton game and it's pretty impossible to win this because you want to fit everyone <laughs> in. And I, and I know that uh, De Zerbi likes Welbeck as well, so I don't see him dropping Welbeck for Juan Pedro. I think he likes that combination of Juan Pedro and Welbeck. Jao, yeah. yeah, Jao behind the strikers. Really yeah, hard, so. and so then, like you said, do you then have to drop? Because, yeah, I agree with you. I think I think De Hood's are pretty much nailed on. And then I, I do really like Billy Gilmore. I do really like seeing him start. But based on Luton... I don't think he will. So I think he'll probably go unchanged, I, I reckon. Because um, there's sort of no reason why not. I, I personally would, would make maybe a few changes, maybe bring in Veltman at right back. And um, actually, to be fair, I actually really like Milner at right back. Basically, to answer your question, uh, Ryan, I'm just waffling here because I have no That clue. might not be a bad <laughs> shout, you know. I, I, I no wouldn't clue. be opposed to, and this has only come into my head, of putting Milner in midfield a little bit for a bit more, you know, Ball winning mm. because you know say Belieber gets done or is it Belieber I don't know how to say his name so sorry Carlos yeah, Belieber who I'm a link with at the moment um, if we do get him over the line chance like it's probably not going to start before Wolves anyway probably and most would be able to yeah. be available off the bench so we probably wouldn't be able to see him straight away so I wouldn't be opposed to see a Milner in midfield and then you've got Milner and and, and perhaps I don't know Dahoud and Gilmore or something along them lines so that you've got a little bit more substance there. Um, yeah. Because, as I say, my only fear is is that midfield thing, and and I'm not trying to. It's not a slight because I don't really think it's a it's a big problem yet because obviously we won the game. Um, but it it was just one of them things that I noticed and thought, oh, okay, that might not be so fluid against a better team. Um, but yeah, yeah. we'll see. Um, in, in terms of battles, then, man. So obviously we spoke about midfield up front. Yeah. Again, I think this one sort of writes itself. Your your <laughs> is I know your answer to this, um, but obviously up front we've got Ferguson or Welbeck. Welbeck has played very well at back end of the last season, but mm-hmm. Ferguson is there, isn't he? And he's 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 available. He's he had a good game against Luton when he came on. Do you think he's going to come back into the starting eleven, or, or do you think we'll stick with Welbeck for for Wolves? You, you know me, Ryan. As as you said, I love Ferguson, and I would start him every day of the week. But I know that. Uh, De Zerbi does like starting Welbeck up top. I think he's going to do that again um, against Wolves. Um, which, look, I, I'm not... He, Welbeck actually played pretty well against Luton. But like you said, long term, I, I do want to see Good Ferguson plan. coming to the side. Yeah, no, no. Look, I, look I, I've been a massive critic of him in the past, as you well know. But recently, <laughs> I've actually got to give him his props. He's he's actually, you know, been a very, very solid player for us. He's he's not, he's not you know, he's never going to be your star Great man. Great team but, player, I think. Yeah, you know. exactly. Exactly, exactly. He's a, he's a brilliant, brilliant uh, team player. And also, I'm sure behind the scenes, he's fantastic as well. So, look, uh, yeah, to answer your question, I think De Zerbi's going to start with Welbeck up top. Um, but I would love to see Ferguson come off the bench maybe around 60, 70 minutes and impact the game that way as well. And then hopefully in you know, maybe a couple of months, see him start. So, yeah, just integrate him slowly. Yeah, agree. Agree. I think I think we can probably agree on wingers as well. Matoma, I'd assume, yeah. starts left wing unless there's any sort of problems. Can't see Matoma not being in a starting eleven in Brighton at the moment, um, unless someone buys it. But please don't. And then right, right <laughs> side is interesting. Probably still with Solly March, uh, Julio maybe not quite ready to start for Saturday. I'd say Solly Maz. Yeah, yeah, Solly. Yeah, Solly for me as well. Again, I thought he played pretty well uh, against Luton. Um, obviously got his goal as well. Great header. So yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why we, sh- why we need to change that sort of front four. Is it? Uh, yeah, front four. Um, and mm-hmm. then obviously, yeah, the midfield potentially, the midfield three is the only sort of maybe change I could see in vision seeing. And also, yeah. does Webster come back as well? That I suppose that's the question. What do you, what do you reckon? I was going to ask he, this one next. Um, I don't know if he's fit. We'll find out obviously in the press on Friday. But I think that the one thing we need to know is if, say, Webster's out, because we're going to see Webster's out just or based on last week. And if he has backtracked um, backtrack of history record. Um, so let's go with Van Heck. Van Hecker, I think it's Van Hecker actually. Van Hecker or Igor alongside Dunk? What would you do? 
I, I would stick with Van Hekkers purely because I've actually, apart from the Europa Conference League final against West Ham, I've not actually seen Eagle, much of Eagle, so I can't really give a fair <laughs> thing. And, I, and yeah. I know he messed up in that final as well. So um, I don't know if that's the best yeah, game yeah. to base it, base it uh, on him. But um, look, I think just for consistency's sake, I think uh, keep Van Hecker in the, in the starting eleven. Do you know what? Like I said um, in the pod last week, I thought he handled Morris really, really well. Um, and that Kaladzinic, is it, uh, for Wolves? He's another sort of similar style player. Yeah. Like, he's quite big. He's quite physical. So I think Van Hecker will actually do really well against him. So I would definitely keep Van Hecker for, for Wolves. Um, and then in the long term, once Webster's fit and Eagles integrated fully, I would then look at maybe bringing either of those back into the team. Because I'll be real. I don't know if Van Hecker's the long term solution. I'll be honest with you. I just not. No. I just, there's something about. I him. like him a lot, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. There's something, that, there's something I little that screams dig him out. out to me that. It's wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. But like, yeah. there's something little. I'm just know. like, in long term, long term, I just don't know if he's the, the long term successor to, let's say, mm. Colwell, obviously, from last season. Yeah, I think because we saw Colwell, like, we saw how good uh, a very good left side centre back is. So I suppose it depends. Obviously, we brought in Atom as well. So there's always a potential yeah. that he could be, you know, at the end of the season, we might be seeing... What a name, by the way. Um, you know how we're like with our young players. Yeah, I know. Big O Atom. What a legend. <laughs> um, so, yeah, worth mentioning him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's that's about everything, really, in the team sec. I think the rest of it makes itself. We'll assume still starts. He'll still start. Uh, and then we'll have Veltman or Milner right back, dependent on who plays in midfield. And there's Stu Pinyan left back. And I think that just about makes an eleven. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I'm, unless I missed anything. Um, but yeah, apart from that, Maz, score predictions. Ooh, um, so I'm going to go with a very tight affair. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Brighton win. I think we're just going to edge it purely. Uh, or, or do you know what? I'm going to go 2-0. I'm going to go 2-0. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're just going to edge it. Maybe Based on the finishing. <laughs> yeah, just based on the finishing. Um, but you look, you never know. Wolves, uh, like I said, they're really positive performance against Man United. It's not going to be an easy game by any stretch, but I'll go I'll go 2-0, just to be positive. Yeah. How about you? I'm going to say we're going to win as well. But I do, I feel like that's going to turn around a little bit for him. I think they'll get a couple of goals, just because, or, or a goal, actually, because of how it seems to work with us. We always seem to concede to the team that yeah. can't score. Um, sure. So I will say... I'm going to say 3-1 because I think on quality, we're still fantastic uh, all around. Mm. And I think we still have the have the capabilities of knocking a few past Wolves because they were there for the taking against West Ham. Oh, sorry, against United at times. Um, so for that reason, you know, Brighton, we've got, we're so stacked up front at the moment and never thought I'd be saying it. With Jao Pedro, if Evan Ferguson, Carabitoma, Solly March, and CISO, you know, we've got, we've got great, even that's just five names that we could potentially be yeah Dingra as well you know he can even be in that starting 11 we never know um but yeah we will see very very soon after Saturday three o'clock kickoff which is lovely and um Matt I guess I'll see you just after Wolves hopefully with Ben as well <laughs> yes yeah ben, ben will be making a return also as well just qu just quickly um give us your predictions as well uh in the comments section what you think will happen in All the comments good stuff yeah but anyway, yeah, not just score predictions. I want to know what you think of the team and the talking points we've selected as well, because it'd be yes. interesting to see what the fans think. But yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. We'll see you just afterwards. And until then, goodbye. Peace. <laughs>